All right, it is another Tech Tip Tuesday, and we're in Spain with Jack. How are you? Hi. <laughs> you got some really long arms, bud. <laughs> <laughs> it comes in handy with this with the camera, doesn't it? Yeah. So today we are going to talk about um, waterfalls, like rock placement, outcroppings. Exactly. Let's do it. All right, so this is a perfect example on the different types of waterfalls because we have two different types right here. I'm going to talk about one side and I'm going to have Jack talk about the other. And we're also going to kind of cover the outcroppings and the importance of that. So when you're building these different types of waterfalls that I, I would call it more of a boulderish type falls, right, Jack? So it really is important to build layers. If you just try to just put just these rocks here and then go back wicked far with a stream, you're not really creating that whole boulderish type waterfall. So not only do you wanna build layers, but you wanna hide the bottoms of all these other rocks. And starting here, see how far this has come back and then you really can't see the bottom of that rock. And then you place a rock that's got all these gnarly spots on it. And then this other rock, this really big rock is just kind of coming down in. So that's gonna kind of force the water to come down through a channel and take advantage of all these different points of this rock. Here's the bottom of the rock he's talking about burying it. And then here's the natural formations in the rock that we're using to create the waterfall. And this is the rock that's feeding off the back, coming onto this one using the natural formations in the rock. And then the other thing you have to watch out for is because of these rocks are kind of gnarly and have all these little nooks and crannies in there, we had to put a leveling rock in the back of that. And what that's doing is actually dispersing the, the water across that whole area. If you didn't do that, you'd have a very narrow channel. Later on, when you see this run, you'll, you'll understand exactly what we were talking about. And then back in this section, we find these rocks that have these natural cutouts and create that little valley through there. So when the water wells up it's going to come right on through there and you're going to get a chic type waterfall off of that and then by placing these other rocks in the backdrop it gives it a little bit different action and uh, rather than just like the sheet falls it'll give you a little bit more of a bouldery white water thing this is the leveling rock right here that Alan was talking about and then this is the rock with the natural cutout which is going to give you like that sheet fall effect and then these are the support rocks so one of the ways of making this look natural is you can't just have a streamlined waterfall. You really need all these outcroppings and these other rocks just to kind of support it and kind of give that some scale and bring that out. You know, you never see in nature that there's just this narrow body of water. There's always these rocks that are on the outskirts that have slid and moved and actually caused that water to go in the manner that it is. So this type of outcropping is super important. Okay, here's, here are the outcroppings. Like here's the waterfall. And these are the outcropping rocks. Alan, that's a great explanation about boulder style waterfalls. This is more of the traditional sheet style that you probably would usually see where there's just a sheet of water coming in between two rocks. Pretty simplistic in design, but if it's done right, it can look supernatural. Here, what's important is we've got a frame rock on our left side and we've got a frame rock on the right side. In this particular case, we took a large flat stone we stood it up vertical and we're using the top of the stone to create our weir for the waterfall so imagine when the water starts flowing through here it's going to be kind of corralled by these two rocks sending it over the middle here creating like that sheet of water super clean right down into where is our wetland filter right now what's important about these frame rocks is you're doing it in scale like if we put huge rocks in here that they were this tall on both sides and we stuck this in the middle it would look like two goal posts for uh, like a football field we don't want to have that effect we want to have it where it's just high enough to corral the water but it, it looks great in support for this middle rock here this really big boulder is actually the blocker rock the really flat one in there is the weir rock where that sheet waterfall is going to come off and then these outcroppings on the left that jack was just talking about that is what's actually going to divert the water to come back over into that area okay so now up top here we've got something similar to what we have down the bottom with a couple added extra layers still have that weir rock in the middle we're supporting it on the right and the left these frame rocks what we're doing is utilizing the natural shape in the rock so water is going to come off here giving us that sheet but it's also going to come off of this we've set this elevation so it's very close to here so with the volume that we have running out of this the headwaters of the waterfall it's going to send water this way and actually shoot off in front of the falls and it's going to do the same thing on the right side it'll hit this natural formation here we'll probably get some water coming into this little crevice here bouncing off this rock now when it comes to this rock 
This was important because we wanted to have a pooling area where the water would fall into, but then have it where it diverts around in the pool. If we didn't have that there, it just falls in and then falls off the next one. This is just adding interest. So usually when you see waterfalls in nature, there's rocks kind of strewn everywhere and there'll be ones that end up in front of the falls that kind of shoot water around. That's where we wanted to place that for that kind of effect. This is where you're gonna see later on when this is running, this crevice right here is where the uh, water is gonna be kind of running through where Jack was just describing. This lower rock is the one that's gonna kind of divert it and get it to go around a little bit before it starts to sheet off those falls. And then this slanted rock right here is the one that you'll see where the water will kind of drop off to the right. Now, Alan, you did a great job covering some of the outcroppings on the right side. We've got some of the same stuff going on here on the left. What you mentioned before was layering. So we've got one rock here. Again, the gravel's definitely higher than the bottom of. We don't see, we don't want to see the very bottom of the rock. That's what makes it look like it was just dropped there haphazardly. So this looks like the rock was sunk in. Then we're coming back behind it, sinking another boulder back this way. And we're doing the same here. So we've got one here, one layered back behind here, one layered in front, and we've got four rocks. But that right there gives it the stretches things out, makes it look like it's one big rock formation, and then it's carried out that way to complete the look. So here again, we have rocks that we're calling blocker rocks or frame rocks for the waterfalls. This one has a lot of nooks and crannies to it. And keep in mind that it's gonna be lower flow, but we have a lot of action going on here where the pump size is obviously much, much smaller than the big falls, but you're still gonna get a great effect and a sound level. So having these rocks over in this section right here, they are just a little bit higher. They're not real high, but it's gonna allow the water to kind of come down through there in the center. And then some is gonna come over off into here. A lot of times you don't have to have a ton of water rushing over certain rocks in order to make it look natural, but maybe just get a little bit of water on there. One of the other things I like how they place the biofalls here, the biofalls is over to the left side here and you really can't see it. And once you put those frame rocks in there, that biofall filter goes right away. So when this is getting fired up, you'll be able to see how the water moves over these different type of rock. Look at the outcroppings, how they go out much farther than a stream. Super important to do that and make everything look natural. So hopefully this helps you out. This gives you a little bit of idea on a boulder falls, a sheet falls, the outcroppings, and kind of layering to make your waterfall look natural. that the waterfall is running you can see how that water takes different paths and goes over the rocks in different ways it creates oxygen in there which is giving that little bit of white water up on the upper level you have all those different rocks where the water can jut off of it to the right it's kind of channeling through so it looks like nature kind of washed all that out and started to create a different path these rocks have tons of character and when you find things like that the water kind of goes through all the different fingers and just gives it that realistic look. And then over on this side, how Jack is describing those sheet waterfalls with that deep pool, it gives you that a different type of effect where the water has just kind of eroded a rock and make it nice and flat and it's just spilling over there and it's really crisp type waterfall and then back up on top where it's kind of coming off that left side and the water's coming over straight and then over on that right side we have that little bit of a stream coming through that crevice you know that's the kind of stuff that you would see in nature and water can take its path wherever it allows it now you can listen to the difference in the waterfalls. That big one we were just over at, you just got a lot of flow and it's got a deep sound. This one's more serene because of the setting and it's still got all those cracks and crevices for the water to flow through. Over here on the right side, it's spilling off that other rock. By the, by the way that you put all those flank rocks in there and level off the other ones, it allows itself to look so natural in that setting. I also like the deeper screens, which I always say on the video, but when you have that depth of water, it creates a different sound pitch to it also. And then over on this left side, you would never know that there's a bile falls hidden over there. They did an excellent job with those falls. 
So this covered area right here, if that waterfall was as big as the other one on the far side of the pond, it would just echo in here and it would actually be too loud. So I'm gonna walk over here with this with doors to my back. And then you can come right over in this section. It's a nice serene sound if you're sitting here on this whole patio area. All right, so that is another Tech Tip Tuesday coming from you from Spain. How many times can you say that, right? I wanna thank Jack Haru for being here to give us a little insight on sheet waterfalls. And uh, if you like this sort of thing, hit the subscribe button, get notified, do whatever you gotta do to keep this stuff coming towards you if this is what you enjoy. And uh, don't forget to check out Atlantis Water Gardens over on YouTube. They got a huge page over there also. So that's all I got for today. Enjoy your families. Bye.